Hello, everybody. Stephen Mead here for Domicile Real Estate, where we are on a mission to help Southern California's renters become homeowners. Uh, this is our Southern California entry level housing market update. Um, so, this is our market for entry level properties and first time home buyers. This is kind of a space really where sort of the, the rubber meets the road on what our market is doing. This is the section of the market that I think is the most volatile uh, week to week. And for kind of good reason, right? Because usually buyers that are in this market space, right? They are, they are towards the near or near the top of the affordability spectrum. So we kind of have a lot of effects. And you know, the title for this week is not clickbaity. I think right now we are at a point where there is one thing that is sort of driving market demand week to week and sort of explaining some of our week to week variations and what's going on. And with that knowledge, you can actually sort of predict a little bit of where things are going to go on a week to week basis, right? Like, so maybe not necessarily predict, you know, months in advance, but predict week to week. Um, and I'm going to go over that, but I want to jump into the stats and then I'll kind of weave that story in and explain it. So uh, here we go. We're going to we're going to grab up our screen share here for our slides. So the first thing you notice here is we have our closed prices, right? And, you know, just as I always mention this every time, this is the result of contracts that were decided four to six weeks ago. So this was people who put in offers, they negotiated, and they just now closed in the past week. And, you know, we noticed kind of something interesting happening kind of in both of our both of our focus groups. So just as a reminder, the blue line is our entry level single family homes. These are three bedroom, two bath properties. And we look at the, the first quartile. So we take the median price and then we take the median between the bottom and that middle. So it's the median of the median. And that is our, our sort of first quartile entry level pricing. And you'll notice prices were essentially flat. And if you look here in condos, you know, we had a really big spike last week and that, and that has eased. If you go back here again, so just as a reminder, our red line is entry level condos. These are our two bedroom, two bath category, which we kind of feel like is a, is a, is a fairly common property type that people are looking for. If you look back over this graph, right? And this is pretty much, if you start here, this is since the beginning of the year, you see a very gentle sort of curve, but there were definitely big weeks that happened, right? Same thing here, and maybe the curve is a little bit more gentle in condos. Uh, there might actually be a lesson there for people. One of the questions we get a lot of times from uh, prospective buyers is, do all properties appreciate at the same rate? The, the short obvious answer is no, but of course what people wanna know is, how do they buy something that is going to appreciate more, right? And, um, you know, it, one of the things that you notice too is that these are different, but they're not wildly different. And I, I think what's more important is that you find areas and, and properties that have inherent desirability. I think it's easier to look at it that way than it is to try to look across property types and say, make these grand generalizations like condos do worse than single family homes. Um, that may even be true on average, but the reality is that's not true everywhere. And it's it's not true in enough places that it's just not one of those statements I'm comfortable making. So if we go down here, uh, if we look at our total monthly payment, you'll notice that really tells an interesting story that week. And that's gonna let me introduce kind of this idea of what we think is really, really driving the market right now, at least what's driving the entry level market and those week to week volatility. So if you look here, You'll notice that our monthly payment actually went down a bit in our single family home entry level, and it went down quite a bit uh, regarding our entry level condo. And this is really the result of two things, right? Like the first thing it's the result of is prices. Uh, but the other component of this is, is interest rates. And that's really what we think is driving the market at the moment. You know, in the, in the last maybe month or two, I think it's been about two months, we've seen we've seen rates go up, right? And in fact, maybe even a few weeks ago, they even spiked a little bit. Well, the last two weeks or so, they've really been dropping uh, and they dropped quite a bit. And to give you a reference point, I don't have a, a chart for this, but let me knock out the screen share. I don't, I don't have a chart for this, but I've, I've looked it up. From an interest rate perspective, because of the drops that we have had, 
we are at the same place. We're at the same place now as we were in maybe the beginning of July of 2020, interest rate wise. And, you know, that really isn't a terrible place to be. And I think, you know, just, just seeing the rates ease a little bit and, and come back down has really given a lot of buyers in the market space confidence in the last week or so. And we're seeing that in sort of the, in sort of the market numbers. Uh, I'm going to go back on share and I, cause I want to talk about where payments have gone, um, you know, since 2018. So if we, if we come back here and we look at this chart, you know, the way we did this is we show mostly this year, but we showed, Kind of a middle of 2018, a middle of 2019, and then started up with 2021 here. So if you look back at where we were in 2018, one of the things that we talked about a lot last year, if you watched our videos, was we talked about the idea that there was room for payments to grow. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is that 2018 was still relatively low, low payments. And also the second reason is that it has now been almost three years since 2018. There is definitely some room for that payment to go up under natural inflationary prices, inflationary pressures, and have it not really be a, a real increase in payments. And I think what we've seen is, see, we were back here at just under 3,600. Now we are just at about 4,000. That is a little bit more than a 10% gain. And I think now we can actually say that payments have actually caught up with 2018, when you factor in inflation, I think we are around 2018 payment levels. And because of that, I think that's the reason why now all of a sudden we're hitting, I don't wanna say a wall or a ceiling, but we're finding that the market is suddenly very sensitive to interest rate changes. Um, our finally chart, final charter in affordability is, is just referencing this to a minimum income level required. And again, as a reminder, this is based on 5% down uh, with excellent credit and no other debt. In order to be in that entry level single family home, you're going to need a minimum household income of 97,000 to qualify or 72,000 in the case of our entry level condos. So moving on to availability, this is, this is really sort of what I want to talk about here in this chart because I think there's a lot going on and there's a lot that's actionable and useful so that you understand sort of where we are. So again, the blue line is our intra level single family home. And if you look, we've spent a lot of time in the 90s. We had a little bit of a break here. Remember, this was interest rates going up um, quite a bit. And then we kind of settled back into this right around 90% level. And there's a, there's a good amount of stability here. And I think what we see that's happening is we, we have hit sort of a little bit of a, a ceiling. And this number seems to be at least a little bit reactive to, to not only what's happening in interest rates, but also the behavior of sellers, right? Like we have more sellers coming to the market, not as many more as we would like. Um, if you look here at, the, at our condo entry level, right? Like, look, this number was high. It, it took a dive. I think prices went up and people, people sort of freaked out and the market needed a little bit of relief. All these things tell me that we are reaching a little bit of an inflection point on prices. And that just means that we're hitting that, that bump where affordability is suddenly a concern. So if you've been sitting by the sidelines saying, how much more can prices go up? I, I think we're reaching a point where we're gonna start talking about they can't go up at the same rate that they had. I mean, we, we literally have had a spring where prices rose 10%. That's, that's a pretty big number to see. And I think the market is now responding with, you know, if, if these prices are, if we want another price jump, um, you know, we're gonna have to see interest rates either stabilize or maybe drop a little bit. I, I don't think the conditions are gonna support another 10% jump in the immediate future. Obviously inventory levels, some things could modify and change that. Um, if we look at our total inventory, this is another one. This is another interesting thing, right? And and we can we can watch. Um, you know, we had inventory go up, and then the last two weeks, it's sort of eased back down again as buyers have, buyers have sort of snapped up these properties. What's happening? 
Well, what's happening is that interest rates went down and that spurred on some demand. That that meant buyers went out there and got there. They, they might've felt like they'd missed their chance and now they have a little bit of relief and they are determined to buy homes. And that's why we're seeing this bit of an inventory drop in the last two weeks. Um, the other fascinating thing about this chart is look at this inventory level. We have had um, differences in inventory between our condos and our single family homes, but look at how close these markets are riding. Now, of course, these are sort of arbitrary things we pick. You know, there's nothing magical about a three bedroom, two bath or a two bedroom, two bath condo. These are just what we think are very typical entry level buyers. This is another one of our charts that sort of our immediate, our immediate market sort of um, indicator, right? And if you look here in the past week, both our entry level single family home and our entry level condo, um, sort of our, our percentage still active took dives. That means this market got more competitive in the last week. Uh, our condos actually spiked two weeks ago and have been dropping. Um, if you look at the grand scheme of where this number is, for condos, we're now kind of looking at what the long-term sort of average number has been. And the same thing has happened for our entry-level single-family homes. I think a lot of this sort of aggressiveness that we are seeing in the market, this is an exact byproduct of rates dropping. I, I have very little doubt in my mind that that is what is happening in the market at this exact moment in time. So if we're looking at our weak supply of homes, again, we saw inventory tighten in both of our categories. And, and again, the reason that's happening, we think is because of this interest rate drop in the last two weeks. That has brought some people back into the fold. They've gotten a little bit of relief in terms of payments. Of course, the irony is what happens, people come back into the market, they get relief on payment, and what does that do to prices? It drives the prices upward. You know, there, there's kind of a statement among economists um, and that statement is the market finds a way, right? And, and it doesn't matter sort of like what you do. There are these sort of like forces um, that will come back. It's kind of like, you know, if, if you drop water, um, you know, water on like a, on, on a concrete sidewalk, it will find the lowest point. That's sort of what, what it will do. And the market really reacts in, in a very similar way is that, you know, you have an action in the market and then there's sort of a bit of a reaction that occurs, you know, markets look for that equilibrium. So what does this mean if you're a buyer? This actually means if you're a buyer, um, the week you want to buy a house might be in that period, either right when rates have gone up and some people have pulled back, or maybe even wait a couple weeks after rates raise, things will actually be a little bit easier for you because sellers will still be going on the market with the attitude of a couple weeks back. But the reality is buyer demand might actually be a little bit lessened. Now, what I want to mention here, and I want to give another, again, a, a bit of a word of caution. We still have absorption rates that are in the high 70s to around 90% for entry level single family homes. This is not a buyer's market. And, and I don't want anybody to, to believe that me telling you that because we might have some week to week variations, there might be some weeks that are a little bit easier, that that means easier is not the same as easy. This is still a, a very tough market for buyers. But I also think part of the reason why it's a tough market for buyers is because of the, the homeownership opportunity in the long run is so good. If we enter a period of inflation, that means your real cost of your payment will drop. Because if we enter into a period of, say, 4% inflation, which is honestly, historically not very high, but it's a percentage higher. If you are in a period of 4% inflation and you have a mortgage on a home and your interest rate is about 3%, that actually means that in terms of real dollars, you are making money by having a mortgage. That's a great opportunity. That's how wealth is built uh, over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And, and that's the thing that we tell first time buyers, right? Is I think most of our entry level buyers, they are focused on the here and the now. And that means they're thinking about what is my apartment gonna do? What is the house I'm renting going to do? Is those rents going to go up? What does it look like to buy? Can I buy something for a similar payment? They're focused very much on those here and now, but the reality is the benefit of homeownership, the best benefits are the 10 year, 20 year, 30 year time horizon, where if you have locked in one of these low 30 year rate, 30 year interest rates, you know, there may be a situation where, you know, rents have long surpassed, 
you know, where your payment level is in your house. So even if you take a higher payment today, even higher payment by a lot, that may not be a situation that exists for more than five years. And that's why we really encourage people to take kind of that long-term view of their finances when they're looking at this. This is really how you build that net worth over time. Anyhow, once again, thanks everybody for watching. I know we're a day late today. We've got some showings. We were busy yesterday. I mean, the market is very crazy. And, um, you know, to be honest, our, our clients come first before making videos. So we try to stay on time with these and, and we'll try to be on time in the future, but understand that when push comes to shove, uh, that's an easy decision for us to make over here. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, send us your comments. We love to read them. We love to respond to them and we will see you next time.